I am Slick Nick, your personal hairline hero. And yes, this is a red pill channel. We're not here to put our hope in other people's hands to try to buy happiness. Oh, if only I had this, then I'd be happy. No, you don't chase happiness when you're red pill. You create your own happiness. You work with what you got. So I want to look at one of the new themes I've been talking about on this channel when it comes to men's hair, and that is that ultimately you would look better if you had shorter hair. The question is how short can you have your hair, not how long can you have it? And I've had some viewers who have longer hair and they say, but I'm happy with long hair. People like my long hair. To which I say, great, keep doing what works for you. That's fine, you're happy. It ain't broke, don't fix it. But still, if you cut your hair, you'd look more attractive. But if it doesn't matter to you, who cares? Do what makes you happy. But either way, people perceive guys with shorter hair as more attractive by default. Anytime a guy with long hair gets it cut shorter, he's seen, he's seen as more attractive. Granted, you work with what you got. If you're losing most on top, then maybe you're best off with a zero guard at that point. And that's something for you to experiment with, just like it is for me. We've now established that I can go with a high and tight crew cut and it works fine, even though arguably my hair is thinner on the top than the sides. But with a zero guard, it, it, it all works itself out. And no one's even noticed that. No one's even said anything about that. So what I want to look at, one of the comments I've seen was from one of my viewers in England saying that experts, I, I guess expert barbers or people who try to make predictions are, are, have been saying for years that long hair on guys is making a comeback though it tends not to actually be the case. And then I also had someone in the comments recently talk about how, you know, when I said men always look better with short hair, they said, yeah, but what about in the 80s, all the heavy metal, you know, hair bands and all that stuff? Well, that's exactly it. That's right there in the question. Back in the 80s. So what we have to look at specifically this, we're in the roaring 2020s right now, okay? What's special about this decade to be alive during this time and to be a man? And that is, there's never been a better time, and it's never been more important, to celebrate your masculinity. We live in a time where culture and companies openly promote the spectrum, L, G, B, T, Q, right? So if you are identifying as a masculine male, you're actually standing out that much more because meanwhile other people are saying i'm this and i'm this and i identified as this okay fine well i identify as a masculine male and i'm showing that to you by having the short hair and it's the same thing that with a lot of uh, lesbians right a lot of them they want to cut off their hair have a hairstyle like this to exactly do that but that's and not all lesbians but that's something that we see them do. A lot of them, not all, but that's something we see. They're more likely to adopt a hairstyle like this. Why? Because it's masculine. So it makes sense that right now, if you're a guy and you identify as a straight male uh, or specifically a masculine, you may be gay, but then you identify as masculine. Either way, if you're going for a masculine identity, whatever that means to you, even if you are female, I should just say this. If you are identifying with a masculine identity, and that's something you're wanting to advertise, then having short hair is going to be the solution. Pretty much, I didn't even think about that when I started recording this video, but it's that simple. No matter how you identify, if you are wanting to identify with a masculine look, short hair is the way to go. How short can you get that hair? Now, on a similar note, and I've talked about this a lot on this channel, is, but what if you don't have hair on top? What if you're basically, you're just bald, and so what do you, what do, you do? How do you work with that? Well, A, obviously you, you shave it all off. You go full masculine right there with that. But wait, there's more, because most guys who can't grow hair on top, especially earlier on in life, typically have great genes for growing a beard. And that's very masculine as well. So it's all about advertising your masculinity. That's what you want to be promoting. And I think the reason I'm bringing this up is because now more than ever, people are appreciating men who identify as men and who embrace their masculinity. 
At the same time, our culture is celebrating everyone who's not doing that. And here's what I'm here to say. Do I have a problem with that? Why? Why would I care would be my answer. It has nothing to do with me. Let other people identify it. Whatever they're doing, it doesn't... I don't care about that. Because they're going to do whatever they're going to do. One of my mottos is focus on what you can control, not on what you can't. What I'm focusing on is myself. I identify as masculine. And now more than ever, I want to further stand out by having a man's haircut. And I want to celebrate that. And if I couldn't grow hair, I would shave it all off and I'd probably grow a beard. And that would be my way of broadcasting that. But I think, as strange as this is, there's a bit of a commodity involved in where masculine men are becoming a little bit more of a minority by default. Even if we are the majority, it's being perceived that we're being pushed to the corner, which I don't feel like I'm a victim over that. All I do is think, well, I'm going to work that to my advantage and I'm inviting you to do the same. It makes, it makes sense. If, if you can broadcast your masculinity, now is the time to do it. So the reason I'm bringing this up, we're going to go back to talking about hair bands in the 80s. See, back in the 80s, this wasn't the same kind of issue it is now. I remember the 80s. I was alive for almost all of the 80s. And back then, it was more acceptable to be able to poke fun at men who were not attracted to females. Let me just say, even the first Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure, one of my favorite movies, go back and watch that movie now and you'd see that there's certain parts of the movie you couldn't do now because of that whole concept. So that was a different time. Back in the 80s, it was more acceptable to joke at other cultures on that spectrum and therefore men could have long hair and not be made fun of for it. But I think totally it has a lot to do with now that things have changed of how society perceives everybody on that spectrum, we're aware of that. People are identifying more. Even the default, people who are not on that spectrum, straight men, for example, even what we're seeing is even we are finding a way that we're like, we're identifying by default as more. I mean, it's funny because even, even in my clothing, when I get a t-shirt now, like, I, I, I don't want to have something silly on my shirt. I mean, even if it's Mickey Mouse, he's frowning. That's funny. Or I've got one with Popeye. Like, I, I recently bought all these new t-shirts to replace all the other ones that were too big because, you know, now that I'm size medium. So I've, I, have, I had to get rid of my other shirts that were too big. And I made a point to... I want to make sure this t-shirt's even masculine. I, I care that much about it. It's not that I'm compensating or insecure about it. It's just now's my chance to further promote that. So I think ultimately that's why long hair on guys is out. And it's going to be out all decade, I'm sure, because we're watching society kind of get recalibrated with the LGBTQ identities. And as they're working that out, I think to some degree we're working this out on our end to make sure that we're identifying as masculine males. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a theory that makes a lot of sense. Your comments belong right here.